I'm ready. Okay. Well, thank you for coming today uh, to my talk on this show that I named Serenity. The series itself, I came up with a new name. I searched for a long time. I called it Breakthrough because this really is a breakthrough for me. Um, there's two things I want to say about it. One is how I made them, how, what happened to me physically and mentally and spiritually as I was making them, but also uh, what was going on with me just before this. So I started the series around Thanksgiving time, October, November time, when I was trying to figure out how to use this new media. It's new to me. It's very popular. There's a lot of things on YouTube, on Flow Media, and it's all the same, and it's pretty, mm, there's not much artistry to it. It's just kind of fun playing with stuff, you know? So I was fun, having fun playing with stuff, and then I realized I wanted to turn this into something that I can use that will be more to my style of art, like the one behind uh, Carl here that I did 15 years ago. So that was a series that was very popular, and I really liked doing it, and it felt really good to me. It's very meditative, called the uh, uh, Dreamscape series. So this series is made with flow media, and there's lots of layers. And you can see through down to the bottom and it gives you a great sense of, you know, you can interpret it any way you want. Um, it's smooth, and it's relaxing. And, and when I was doing this work, it was, after I learned how to use it with these smaller pieces, I wanted to do these larger pieces, and it was just some technical challenges to it. So I decided that I was going to just really access my muse and let it take over. And so I didn't use any logical form of planning, uh, except to maybe the sizes and to order the, figure out what kind of media I could use, you know, all the technical things for infrastructure like so they don't fall apart and last forever. Um, but the rest of it, like how it was put together, the, the, the palette, the layers, the, um, the order in which I made them was all based on whatever it came to me. I didn't plan anything, and it happened super fast. And what was all over, it was just, it was it's like, how did this happen? They just like showed up. I mean, really, all this stuff showed up in a couple of months, which is really shocking, because normally it would take a year to do this amount of work. Um, so, what was going on inside was I had, as many of you know, I had a serious car accident, and I had chronic pain for several years, and I was on painkillers, and I would drink alcohol and take painkillers in order to eat or have a conversation, which was kind of dull because I was, you know, drugged up. So I wasn't really thinking clearly. I didn't have a lot of energy. The series I did before this was called Ethereals, and I would, uh, was standard on canvas, and I was, uh, whenever I painted on, I was doing circles and mathematics on it. I was trying to get back to math because I lost my ability to use mathematics. And I was scratching it with razor blades and using sandpaper for texture effect, which I hadn't really done before to that extent. Compared to this, glossy and shiny and soft and ethereal and, and you know, serene. So what was going on back then was I was really sick and I was in pain. That's how I felt. I was showing in the painting how I felt. And what happens as an artist, you don't know why you're creating something. It just comes through from the behind your eyes, behind your thoughts. You don't get to think about it until it's all over. Then you look at it, it's like, how did this happen? Why did I even do this? <laughs> or not and even if I do this. Right, yeah, where did it come from? So thank you, Muse. I mean, even putting the show together, there's, you know, there's, there's a checklist of things you have to go through. I didn't use it. I knew what I had to do, just kind of theoretically, but I let my Muse take me through everything. I woke up in the morning thinking, oh, I'm gonna do this today. And my muse would say, no, you're going to do this. I go, okay, no arguments. I did not argue with my subconscious at all. I just did. And it came together really well. And it was so much less stressful. So I feel like I'm in a whole new way of living. I've got a whole new style of art. I've had several dear artists, friends of mine, who are deeply into the field that tell me that forget everything you've done before and just go with this. Go with this and stay there. So... Uh, if you'd like to know anything about how they're made, I can answer some questions. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, it's here. Yes. It's nice. described on your yes. Do a particular the process. process. Yes. Just, okay. So, do you have any particular question to start with? Well, I'm interested in the layering and the time that it takes to create the piece. Okay. 
So should I talk about the big one? Sure. Big one? Yeah. So this big one, uh, this is 48 by uh, 30, 48 by 60. And uh, it takes- Does this one actually have a name? Yes, it does. The name is The Way of Water. The Way the, of Water. These two are absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Um, so each layer, there's about five or six layers on here, and each layer takes a whole quart of media. So I get this big barrel of this media, and I need to have smaller containers for me to use as pouring mechanisms. They're on the ground, first of all, I can't do these in my house. I can't do them in my own studio because it has got dust like everyone. It has to sit there for a, for a day where it's completely wet, and then it has to sit there for another week till it really cures, and anything can float down on it and get stuck. Cat hair, dust, your own hair, fuzz from your clothes. So I had to go into a, a storage room, keep safe, which is known for being super clean and very safe. And I put down plastic on the floor, and I got rollers. I got um, rods that you use for uh, for your um, closet. So I put five rods on the ground, and they would lay on top of the, so I could roll them back and forth. I could pick up the corners and manipulate the paint. So that's how I have set up in the storage room. And then I would, I had this big quart or big gallon of the media, and then I had smaller bottles that I mixed up with the palette that I got all the colors you see here. So I had, I don't know, maybe eight different colors. That I mixed up with, with you know, golden paint mixed in there. It was really dense and heavy. You wouldn't be able to see through anything. And then I had quart jars that I filled up with medium and then put some of that pre mixed color into it. When I'm doing the lower layers, I had more medium, more um, uh, pigment than medium. And the farther up I got each layer, as I got further up the stack of layers, more medium and less pigment so you could see through it. Which is what you do in anything, right? When you're doing your last glazing, it's just what, it's like a couple or just a little bit of color on your brush and you just float it in a, a cup of water. You hardly use anything at the very end when you do your last glazing. So, um, it's on the ground. I've got, I'll, I'm in my zip-up suit. That painters use in your hazmat suit. My hazmat suit, right. I've got my mask on. I've got my gloves on. The gloves are on to keep my hands clean. The hazmat suit is to keep my dirt from getting on the paint. Because they bring in, you know, stuff from the house. And the floor gets really slippery too. Really slippery. And thank God they had anti-slip on the bottom of these hazmat suits. And then I fill up these quart jars with the colors that I wanted. I put them alongside the, alongside here. Put three or four here and three or four over there. I would loosen the can the tops because it goes really fast and it starts interacting really quickly and it starts to dry really fast. It's a little skin on top. And you don't want that happening. You used to so then I start pouring the, the fluids on it. And the big one like this, I have to pour it so it's actually flitting across the room. So I had to get a separate room to this one because it was starting to affect all the other paintings. So you're pouring from the side. I'm pouring, yeah, I'm just pouring. So this over here, this is the last layer I took of just a drizzle. I just drizzled it, like you would on a food, right? Are, are you surprised that you have as little or as much control as you do with the pouring process? What, which one of those does it fall into? The well, I guess, less control or more control than you imagined? I kind of got used to it. You know, it's kind of like when you ride a horse. You know his head is going to move. You got to move your arms with the horse's head as it's moving, as it's running or trotting, and, mm -hmm. and you're, you know, you, you just you adjust yourself to the movement of the horse, but you control the horse more or less. So by the time I got to this one, I was a pretty adept at knowing what the paint was going to do. So, so also in the <laughs> series of, of the, all of these paintings, was this more toward the last? This was the last one. Yeah. I started off with the smallest ones first. Then I go into the next size up, and those next sizes up, and then I went to, really, then I did the next one, then I did the next one, and then I did the next one. This was the last one. And this one, like I said, this one's got its own room. No. Plus, this one was still dry, and I couldn't pick it up. It had to sit there and cure. And, do you remember, we had this horrible wind, and rain, and cold. It was getting down to, you know, in the low 30s. This doesn't cure when it's cold and damp. So I was just biting my nails, like, is this going to be ready for the show? And of course it was, because the views, you know, had all figured out. Um, I guess. I just believed it, and it worked out. So, uh, yeah, so anyway, I put the paint down, and then it was starting.
start lifting and letting it flow off the edge. For me, it was really important to have a, have as straight a line as possible because I wanted to be more of a landscaping, kind of like the one with the, the dreamscapes. Now, I, this one here, I was a little more inventive with it because it was square, so I, did, I just had a different feeling about it, so I let it, uh, I, I started picking things up from the corners and letting it go to the corners. So it, it's just the, how you want the paint to move is how you pick up the, how you pick up the, Painting the move. Is that using acrylic too? That's acrylic, but it's not. Um, but it's not. Oh, it's not it's just. It's, it's just. It's not. Is that, is that what it looks like underneath the plexiglass? No. Glass? No. This is actually the media is is this. Mm -hmm. Every layer looks like this. Okay. But if I used a different material, that's particular media. If I used um, a different kind of media, it's it's uh, it's not as glossy. It's semi gloss. And do you put the basing on when it's paint still wet? It's poor. Oh, this is all oh, this, uh, So these these four pieces here, the large ones, they <laughs> how they're manufactured is I've had uh, canvases that I hadn't used for a long time. I never finished the piece. So I just pulled off the canvases. There were the big stretcher bars. I ordered the aluminum uh, aluminum sheets cut to size and then I epoxied them on and used clamps. So that took a day, you know, a couple days actually. Because I had to do I only had so much room in my house to do this as well. And then uh, we moved them to the storage place. So but the facing itself is what? What do you call it facing? Well, look, it's shiny. So that's all? Every layer is that. So, so that's all the accumulation of the layers, not just some sort of finish, no, shiny. That's, that is the media okay. itself, is, is oh. always shiny like that. Oh. Yeah. It's like butter is always shiny. Okay. Yeah. So. So I'm curious about how you get these straight apparent lines, such as in this piece, versus here, mm -hmm. where it seems much more blurred. What is the result? Why is that? Well, this one, um, the very last layer I put on was this big, huge layer of very, very uh, thin white. And I just made it flow that way. So I wanted that sort of look. Um, same thing here, so I had white and then I had this uh, paint gray color and I mixed blue and black together and I just, I just, just moved it that way. So. And then how did you get the lines on this? This over here? Yeah. Just, like, just a thin amount, so instead of having a throwing out like a cup at a time or a quart at a time, I just dribbled out a small oh, amount. So, the lines so I controlled the amount of paint that went down on the, on the canvas. Oh. So, you wouldn't do that at the, at the lower levels because it would just be buried. So you, I did this on the very top. I thought it just was a nice effect. So, so it just looks like rock scar, so that's all. It does, exactly. Well, this one too. And you know, my, everyone knows my background, my, uh, my, uh, um, my formal education outside of arts and geophysics. I've got a <coughs> degree in geophysics. So a lot of my work has a tendency to have some sort of rock formation in it as well. Landscapish kind of thing. Is that? <laughs> is that what you were trying to do, or do you think yeah, that, that was my subconscious? It, well, I just like that sort of feel. I like that kind of kind of things like the Dreamscape series. Not landscape, but they kind of look like landscape. Mm. They look like they're abstracted landscapes. Is what they really are. Yeah. Is there any significance to the aspect ratio? Is it really just no. No, I just have these. Uh, these were just in my studio. So I, I, like I said, I, struck, I pulled off the canvases. You could, this is the exact same size as that one, and I probably bought them all at the same time. Yeah. Susan, as you were, as you were, as you were um, able to make this process evolve, mm -hmm. were you personally thrilled to see what was emerging at the same time that you were doing it? Did you know what? what you were? Did you know what was happening in the sense of being very? I mean, sometimes when I paint, I think, "Oh my God, I'm so happy and excited." So, did you have that? Sense? I, I did. I did. I took photos of them all along the way, and sometimes they changed by the time I came back. Uh, so then I had to repaint them again. So sometimes that's why there was more layers. Like, oh, it's not the way I wanted it to be. If the gravity made it pull off the wrong way for me, so then I had to read because I had an idea what I wanted. And then other times, like, oh, it's perfect, seal it. <laughs> so some of them I put, like this one here, I think I put these two both, I put a, a, a final clear layer on it because there was some little smudge in there, you know. So I, I just sealed it, and that's it, done. So, 
Yeah. Have you thought about doing a time lapse um, animation or something next to it to show us how it developed over time? I have, and it's it's just it's kind of hard to be in that kind of analytic thought form when you're doing yeah. this, especially when you're done. You've got you know, you've got all the stuff on. You take it off. You want to get out of the smell. You want to just leave. So and, and you're you're like this. So I have actually with the smaller pieces. But my camera over like that, and guess what happens? So there's more chance of somebody falling at it. So that's when I'm like this. So that's where you see some photos of, of from me doing this from far away, because I don't want to put my anything over it because it does drop something, and then you've got something in the paint. And you could put a rigging up and just always photograph it. I could. Day or night. Yeah. I could. So you could yeah, automatically you. then. Uh, Can't be a dust collector though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem, is, is the dust is the... Yeah, I think it would be fascinating for people to see that. Mm -hmm. Because when you see it as is, none of us are aware of the profound process mm -hmm. and development over time. And I think that helps us understand the depth of what's happening. Yeah. And appreciate the art. It more. would be fascinating, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have some photos like that. Not for every one of them, but I have some. Yeah. There's a problem in shooting these though, because of the gloss on them. <clears throat> so we haven't we haven't quite solved how to photograph these. Right. Because you got the light overhead, so you can yeah. paint, and then when you yeah. then you've got the reflection. Yes. So it, 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 yeah. you know, that probably wouldn't be a, an issue of somebody reviewing to see how it changes, because the gross features are still there, even though there's a big light reflected in it. It's sort of interesting for a gallery though how to light it is a problem too, mm -hmm. right? Which is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Is there possible to get a certain kind of filter that would filter off the glare? That'd be probably yeah. it, yeah, yeah. Is that the tiger there? Yeah. Yeah. I would put less to the side rather than on top. Yeah. You would put less to the side? Yeah, there you go. But, but while this being created... But what can you better off with the overhead? Yeah. yeah. Because it's on the ground, you can't pick it up for a good week because it'll just start to say. When you say it'll start to sag, you mean the paint, the media starts the media to sag. The media starts to sag. And it, like, you know, like how... But is it sagging now? No, because it's hard. Because you finished it. Yeah. Oh. I brought it, well, when I brought it here, I was very nervous that it was going to sag. Because this was the last one. It's the heaviest. It's the thickest. And it was cold and rainy. And I didn't touch it for a week. And um, I did kind of heat up the room once in a while with a torch. Um, we brought it here very, very carefully. Oh man, it was hard to in here because we we're so worried that something would, you know, anything would just dent it. And we got it here unharmed and we hung it up and now it's had this, uh, you know, whole month to really get hard in here. It, it, it's as hard as glass, man. It's really hard. It's almost indestructible. I mean, you could scratch it, of course, but um, it's, it's not as delicate as it is during the first months, weeks, days in particular. So do you see yourself moving in this direction for a while? Yeah, absolutely. No. You should have that. No, you didn't. <laughs> well, I do now. I do now. I did at the time. I mean, I really, at the time, I was just so into it. You know, you're just, you're just in. No, it literally just showed up. Yeah, it just. No, no, I know that. Yes. But, now, but now that it has yes. shown up, yes. what, what oh, are, yeah. what's oh, your yeah. vision yeah. for the next six months for you making? Up? That is the question, and that is the question that I'm being asked to resolve. And uh, so who's asking you to resolve this? Uh, I have a, uh, I have somebody who's counseling me. He's an art critic. What? I have an art critic who is counseling me and asking me, it's like plan on what you're doing for your next series, what's next? And he also asked me to tell the personal story, which is what I realized. And it was actually when I wrote it, it made me cry. And then the first time I read it, it made me cry too. So, you know, because it was pretty tough. It was really tough. You guys were there. You all saw it. Does yeah. size come into it at all, in terms of when, when you think about how big big should be? Because um, it feels much more powerful than it's big. Yeah, it is. But they, but then I'm going to have a pile of big paintings in my studio, so yeah. it's harder to, you know, if you saw this online, you would get it. Yeah. And I have the same problem with the, you know, with the James Cave series. Online, the big ones, people just didn't get to have to see in person. And to have an ability to take these big paintings out and show them in person, it's, it's very rare. It's, it's not, you know, unless you have your own place. Or you have a solo show once in a while. 
So, um, so, uh, so yes, uh, clearly I need to look at other spaces and to find out who would be a good match for them. But to talk about floor paintings, because of the stuff on YouTube, it's so popular with that really cheesy kind of music. I start talking about it, they go, uh-huh, they don't want to talk to me about it. It's like, no, no, this is different. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's what all artists say. No, really, it's different. <laughs> Take a look. Oh, oh, it is different. I don't see that. How did you get the public structures in this one? Uh, that's a good question. So that's technical. Also, it's uh, fluid dynamics and- well, mostly question. How did you get the bubbly <laughs> texture in there? Uh, which we have in some other ones as well. So there's bubbles over there, there's some margins over here. Oh. There's a couple of techniques so paint uh, starts to disintegrate and break apart when you put water in it or oil in it. So I use either water or still kind of oil. A few drops, kind of oil. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it breaks up the tension in the, in the paint. So it doesn't, it doesn't have that, uh, uh, that flow, like the able flow. So much does it work? Heavy. <laughs> it's very heavy. Yeah. So um, this is so. These two are so heavy that I couldn't use standard uh, 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 wire on the back. I had to use those uh, those bars that you put on a big mirror. So it's actually uh, attached. Uh, yeah. Because it was it was just it was starting to make these um, the wooden structure behind it start to creak, and it would well it would hang on the wall long enough. So we had to really give it some heavy duty. Are there uh, fumes you have to be concerned about when you're making Pardon? Are there fumes? Yeah, so I have a mask on. A respirator? It's, it's, well, the mask I used was graded for bleach. Okay. Bleach fumes. Okay. So there's some a little bit stronger than that, but the kind Does of... Does that get in the way when you're... Well, it's, you know, you take it off, you're yeah. kind of wet under there. Oh, okay. So, you know, but it's better than it's having better these fumes. Because you so you're over it, you've got the big bucket. I mean, yeah. literally, it's a bucket, like a paint bucket, full of this media. And you have to pour it into each you know, container and you get to mix it up. It takes a lot of time to prepare each time I do a pour. It, the pour goes really fast. And the preparing the colors each time, preparing the paint with the uh, pigments and the density of the pigments and making sure there's no bubbles in there too. The I always got bubbles on top. It's like, now what are you gonna do? It's gonna dry with bubbles all over it. So you can use a torch actually to get some rid of some of the bubbles. Um, Oh, or you do another layer. <laughs> you pop it, then you got an empty hole, then you got to do another layer. So, is this the is this the first time, and or the only time that this emotional, psychic dynamic happened in when you started this series? This in this powerful most, way. This this is the most powerful one, and I think it's because when I was suffering. I was searching for an answer, and sometimes I was told, well, it's emotional. Maybe it's a childhood trauma. So I was going through all this psychological angst. angst, and I was going to, I went to therapy, I did some mushroom ceremonies, I went to a shaman and did some, you know, between sleep and night, between sleep and wake ceremonies would last all night long. So I was doing shamanic ceremonies, as well as seeing a psychiatrist, as well as seeing a neurologist, as well as seeing uh, these other doctors that had these other solutions. And so you know, I'm trying to figure out what's going on and really doing deep searches inside automatic writing. So I think because I opened myself up pretty wide when it came time for this, and I said, okay, Muse, just go for it. I'm going to trust you. That's it's, what happened. It saved your butt. It did. <laughs> and, you know, in, 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 and what happened to me, I've been paying 26 years, and what happened to me is after the first couple of years, I cured myself of my migraine headaches, which I had very frequently. Because you opened yourself up? Because, it, it's, a, it's a curious qu question. And it's, I don't know that I opened myself up, but I stepped into my power base with an amazing sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. And so it had more to do with confidence and belief in my sensibilities and my trust of my body. Mm -hmm. So it was a combination of both of those things. And so this might be a similar kind of thing for so. you. Yeah, I think, I think it is. I think it's a pretty common effect for a lot of artists at different stages. And I uh, hopefully I can stay with this, right? I mean, want something first before it can happen, so. Yeah. It's like, what, the thing that's puzzling to me is how you get such amazing effect with the big ones that doesn't seem to be the same with the smaller ones. 
But they're not, it's not, I don't think I do. Yeah. Well, I, I think also, I, I, by the time I did this uh, one, it was the last one, I was just really so deep uh, into it. It was, you know, I, I had, and plus I had a lot more room to work with. Yeah, that's I think it just is a matter of space. Yeah. yeah. So, you, you, so look at the amount of space here. If I had this in here, it'd be very, very busy. Yeah. So, you know, if I expand that, it became really large, you would see details in there too. So if I did that same one, but it almost looks painted as opposed to flowed. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, that's, yeah. That's all. But I mean, if I could take this design and scale it up, I would have to do things like this in it. So you can make yeah. it interesting. Otherwise, it would be too, yeah. just the color feels. All I mean is it's just a shame that yeah. it feels different. Yeah, it's almost it feels different. different. Yeah. yeah, they're too yeah. different. Well, I think the bottom one has that same Yeah, thing. a little bit, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, that's a little more, more this, this one yes. here, it's a little more like this one here. Yes. Yeah. yes. And this is the smallest of the Yes. Yeah. But I wonder what would happen if you went bigger. <laughs> <laughs> really big. Really big. Yeah, yeah. Really, really big. Huh? <laughs> the walls. The wall size. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> my studio. Yeah. I do have a pretty big studio. Yes. Yeah. But it's uh, very heavy. Yeah. It's wonderful though. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Brian, you came a little bit late. Did you have any questions? No, no. I've heard them all. Okay, good. We just want to walk closer. All right, great. Please do. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming and asking me wonderful questions and listening to my story. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.